All right, so in 1.5, we talked about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and composite functions, and then we talked about their domain restrictions. These, no, these are all like based on your equations, but remember, we also did them with graphs, so you definitely, that will also be on your test. You definitely want to review how to pull information from a graph. So number one literally just says find f plus g, but in the instructions it says make sure you include the domain restrictions. So the adding, we would simply just add those two expressions together. So I'd get 3x minus 1 plus x squared minus 4, and then I just put it in decreasing degree order and combine my like terms. So x squared plus 3x minus 5 is what you should get for the sum of those two. And then you want to include domain restrictions. So remember, if you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, then anything that's part of an original restriction, if you use it, again, gets pulled down. And then you have to look at your answer and see if there's anything new. Nothing in my restricted, my original f of x or g of x, right? And then we didn't int introduce anything here. So the domain here is negative infinity to positive infinity. When you go to 2, now you're subtracting. So 3x minus 1 minus x squared minus 4 means that minus is going to go to both. So 3x minus 1 minus x squared plus 4, and I get negative x squared plus 3x plus 3. And again, no domain restriction from the beginning, nothing new got added, so my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Good so far? Okay. Then we go to 3, and 3 is your division. So I put the 3x minus 1 in my numerator, and the x squared minus 4 in the denominator. If I could reduce it, I would, but there's nothing there to reduce. There is no restriction to carry down, but what do we just do by putting that fraction, or putting the x squared minus 4 in the denominator? There's a whole new restriction, right? Because what's true about a variable in the bottom? This whole thing can equal 0. So I can either add the 4, square root both sides, putting plus and minus, or I could have factored this, x plus 2 x minus 2 and set both of them not equal to 0, which means x cannot equal negative 2 and x cannot equal 2. So from negative infinity to negative 2, then negative 2 to 2, then 2 to positive infinity is the domain restriction on that one. Questions? All right, and then four and five. So if these were, like, if there was a variable in there, then remember that the restriction is the whatever's on the inside. That, if that has a domain restriction from the initial, we bring it down, and then we look at the answer. There's a value here, so there's not, it's not like there's an X there. We're not going to ever introduce something new because there's no X there, but you do want to think about your domain restriction from the beginning. Again, with composite or the F open dot G or G of F, whatever it is, you always look at the second variable. So in four, I'd be worrying about G. If there was a restriction on G, I'd carry it down. In five, I'd be worrying about F. If there was a restriction on F, I'd carry it down. Neither of that is happening this time, so I'm just going to plug in. So I'm going to go G of negative one. So into G, I plug in my negative one, and I get one minus four, which is negative three, and then I'm going to find F of negative three. So now I plug it into the F, and I get three times negative three minus one, or negative nine minus one, which is negative ten. And then for 5, now we're plugging in to f first. So this is the same thing as saying g of f of negative 2. I'm going to plug in to f of x first, 3 times negative 2 minus 1, negative 6 minus 1, negative 7. And g of negative 7 means I plug it into the g. So negative 7 squared minus 4, 49 minus 4, which is 45. And again, neither of those had a domain restriction because the one on the right did not carry one down and we didn't introduce anything new because we, we even got rid of the variable. Questions? Questions on 1-5 homework? Any of the composite stuff? So again, make sure you also know how to read these from a graph. It will be in the review. We'll talk about it a little bit, but it's not on the warm-up. All right, we're going to go through. So this is uh, your test review assignment on Canvas. There's a lot of things in here. The, the purple thing is what I had you take notes of because obviously the Wi-Fi is down. But this is a note. If you want to open it into notability, you can edit it. I, I post it as a note because it's my handwriting. It's not like I typed it. So if you want to change the color, move things around, whatever it is, that's editable. 
Um, and then under it is a calc practice question. So these are the ones that are your, like your, your graphing calculator. If you know you need the extra practice, there's an extra practice there with solutions. The third thing or third pairing of things is your actual PDF. This is what you're going to do tonight. I would say do as much of it as you can. Don't spend five hours on it, but do as much of it as you can. Even if you have to like jump around a little bit and do things from different sections, because tomorrow I'll go over questions on that. But Wednesday or Thursday, the day of your test, there's no time for questions before you start your test. So it is better to come in tomorrow knowing what you need help with so that I can answer those questions tomorrow. If you hold off and wait to do that until Thursday, you can't come in here and be like, I have questions. Like there's just not enough time. You have to start your test. And then there's an extra review there on the bottom. And then there's an extra difference quotient one. So if you know you need the extra practice in the difference quotient. To me, the difference quotient is something that's either going to like slow you down unnecessarily, or if you do that fast, you're saving yourself some time. The more comfortable you are, you could do that problem in less than a minute if you know what you're doing. You just got to be careful. All right, so we're going to fill out this guy. This is the topics that are on your test. So it is um, C1 to 1.5. Like we talked about already, it is part calculator. You'll start with the calculator part. It's one big function that you have to find the max, the min, the zeros, the domain, the range, the increasing, the decreasing, all that stuff um, using your graphing calculator. And then we get into the actual like questions that are non-calculator. And that was where we started in C1. This was the distance and the midpoint. So distance is, let me, square root of, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you did this, you used that on your quiz to find out like the lengths of the sides of a triangle. There, so there could be application questions there. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. You'll get them today. The midpoint x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. And we use that obviously just to find the midpoint. You also used it when we got into our circles. Like if we wanted to, if I gave you the end points of the diameter and you wanted to find the center of your circle. Okay, in C2, we did intercepts and symmetry, and we even graphed in C2. Um, before we got into specific functions. So your x-intercepts, we plug 0 in for y, and your y-intercepts, we plug 0 in for x. Make sure these are in coordinate point form. You're not listing these. These need to be in coordinate point form. Then came symmetry. So to test for x-axis symmetry, we plug... We make y, negative y. For y-axis symmetry, we make x, negative x. And for origin, we change both. x becomes negative x. y becomes negative y. We simplify and compare if all terms equal the original or all terms change sign. then it's symmetric to whichever test you did. And then in C2, we also did the equation of the circle. So our standard form of our circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared where your center is hk, your r is your radius. And I could ask you to find the equation of a circle. Either I can give you the center and a point on the circle, we plug that in as the hk, the xy, or I could give you the end points of the diameter where you'd have to find the midpoint, which is your center, and then plug in the center and a coordinate point would be the, the way I would recommend you do it. We've got slope intercept y because I'm supposed to be standard, which is ax plus by equals c. And for this one, our shortcut is negative A over B is your slope. 
So if I give you something in standard form, it's easy to take the slope out of it, negative A over B. Remember, if it is standard form that the X and the Y have to be on the same side, they all have to be whole numbers. And X must be positive. So I could say, like, here's the slope and the point that it passes through. Find the equation of a line in standard form, okay? If it doesn't say, then the default is point is um, slope intercept. Y equals MX plus 3. And then the last one is point slope. This is Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And for that one, we plug in x1, y1, the slope, and then solve for y. We talked about the relationship between parallel lines. What's true about the slopes of parallel lines? Same, good, same slope. We talked about the relationship between the slopes of perpendicular lines. These are what? Opposite reciprocal, good. Change the sign, flip the fraction. So with these, I could ask you for the equation of a line if I gave you a point and slope, if I gave you two points, if I gave you a point and the equation of a line that's parallel to it or equation and the line that's perpendicular to it. All that stuff came from one, one. Still good? All right. Then came 1, 3, and 1, 2. I mean, 1, 2, and two, 3 I put together because it was a lot of the function stuff and some of it overlapped. So if I gave you something and I asked for you to tell me if it's a function, there could be three different ways. One is as points. Okay. X cannot repeat. With a different Y. From an equation, y cannot be raised to an even power. Or be in absolute value. That turns your function on its side and it would fail the vertical line test, which is how we test to see if it's a function from a graph. All right, then we got to piecewise functions. And again, some of it was in one, two, and some of it was in one, three. Piecewise functions, if I gave you the function, you'd have to answer a question like, what is f of three? Or what is f of two? You'd have to use your graph. That happened in um, like one, two. And then in one, three, we talked about how to graph them. So you need to know how to do both. I can give you the, the equations for your piecewise function. You'd have to be able to graph them, okay? And then also be able to answer a question based on them. Then in one, two, we did domain of an equation. Remember, it is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, except if there's a variable in the bottom, if there's a variable under the square root, or the combination of the two. If it's in the bottom, we say it cannot equal zero. If it's under a root, we say it's greater than or equal to zero. And if it's in the bottom, we say greater than zero. And if there's two restrictions, we have to figure out what's overlap. So that's when sometimes it's easier to plot that on your number line. And these you will answer in interval notation. So domain, range from a graph, domain from a function, increasing, decreasing behavior, all of those are going to be in interval notation. And then in 1, 2 is also the difference quotient. This is your f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Again, in the beginning, it's like complicated, but if you practice that like four or five times, that should be easy. 
All right, this is the big chunky one from your calculator part. So you're gonna get one function and it's gonna ask you for all the parts. It's gonna ask you for domain, range, increasing, decreasing. It says constant, because obviously if it's constant, that's part of it, but the, the initial behavior is called increasing, decreasing behavior. Your zeros, which you will list, your max and min will be in coordinate point form, your even and odd, and then if I ask you for the value of y given an x, you'd have to know how to go to that value part and put it in. Even, well, domain and range, we go left to right, right? Left to right. Range, bottom to top. Increasing and decreasing behavior. Every time it's going up, it's increasing. Every time it's coming down, it's decreasing. We use the x values here to establish when it starts and stops. And remember, they always get the parentheses. Increasing, decreasing, always parentheses. The only exception is if it starts or stops con constant, which you won't be able to graph on your calculator. We have not gone on over how to graph a piecewise function. So it's not going to start or stop constant, okay? Your zeros, you're going to list these. List the x values. Your relative max and min, these are going to be in x, y coordinate point form, okay? There could be more than one. If it goes up and down and up and down, that's two maxes, one min. Even and odd, there's two ways to figure it out. Even, is it symmetric to the y-axis? So if I look at my graph, is it mirrored on the, the y-axis? Can I fold it in half and have the entire thing overlap? And if it's odd, it's symmetric to the origin. And this is like top right quadrant gets flipped to down bottom left or top left to bottom right. If you actually take your calculator and you flip it upside down, does it look exactly the same? Yeah. Nope, you'll literally just list them. So if it crosses three times, you'll give me all three X values. And then the other way to test your even and odd is if you're given an equation, if it's even, we change x to be negative x and see if everything goes back to the original. If it does, it's a measure to the y-axis, which means it's even. And if it's odd, we change x to negative x, but we look for all signs to change. It is the same as your symmetry tests, okay? It's just that you don't have a y anymore. You have an f of x, which means there will be no symmetry to the x-axis because it would fail your function test. And it means you only have to change the x for your odd and only look to see if it goes, if every single term changes sign. And then our value of y given x, this is where you're going to use your value menu. So second, calc, and then you go to value. That menu, second calc, is basically where you're going to do all those things. Max, min, zeros, and value. Questions on any of that stuff? So you'd need to know how to do it with a calculator. Like here's the graph. Here's an equation graph that answer the questions. But then also if I gave you a picture, you'd have to be able to do that same stuff. Yep. So even is it symmetric to the y-axis? Does it literally overlap? And with the equation, you're plugging x in, you're plugging negative x in as x and seeing if everything goes back to the original. So like a parabola, like x squared plus 5. If I plug in a negative x there, it's going to go back to positive x squared. All right, then came all of your transformations. So you need to know what all the parent functions look like so that you can then move them around. So we've got our x squared, our absolute value of x, our x cubed, our square root, our cube root, and our um, reciprocal function. So x squared is going to have a vertex at 0, 0, and then over and out one in both directions. Obviously, that changes with a stretch or a shrink. Absolute value, same three points, but we make it a V because that slope would be constant. x cubed, we pass through 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, but we make it like a little bit of an S. Square root is zero, zero, then one, one, and then it flattens out. Q 
cube root does the same thing but gets reflected over the origin. And the reciprocal function is top right corner, bottom left corner, quadrant one and quadrant three, with an asymptote passing through both axes. Make sure you'd know how to find domain, range, increasing and decreasing, even and odd on all that stuff. Okay, then this sucker, which, oh, I lost my F. There should be an F of X. Okay, nope, there should be a G of X, actually. All right, the plus and minus all the way at the front is your reflection over the X axis. So it flips it upside down. The A would be the value that's on the front. If A is bigger than 1, it's a vertical stretch. If A is between 0 and 1, it's a vertical compression or shrink. It's as though the ceiling and the floor are caving in on your function. The C, or the number being multiplied inside the function, is a horizontal. If it's bigger than 1, it's a horizontal shrink. If it's in between 0 and... Oh, that's a C, not an A. If it's in between 0 and 1, it's a horizontal stretch. When you add and subtract inside the function, this is a shift, horizontal shift. So this is a, if it's positive, we go left. If it's negative, we go right. And then last but not least, all the way at the end is your B. And this is your vertical shift. If this is up, if, it go, if it's positive, it goes up. And if it's negative, it goes down. Oh, you need the, there needs to be a plus and minus in here too. Sorry, a plus and minus inside is a reflection over the y-axis. So if it was on that C or on the X directly inside the function, then it causes a horizontal flip. It goes over the Y. Up or down, positive up, negative down. So you're going to get a multi-part where it says give the parent function, Des describe the translations or transformations, graph it, find, you could ask you for domain and range, you could ask you even odd, like all those things can be asked on those kinds of things. So make sure you know how to do it. And then the flip of that, just like in the homework, is here's a picture, give me the equation. So you'd have to know from an equation, I mean from the picture of a graph, what it is. If it's an absolute value that's pointing down but shifted left to something like that, I would know this is a negative absolute value uh, plus 2, something like that, G of X. Okay. Is it upside down? Is it flipped over the axis? Is it shifted left or right? Is it shifted up or down? You won't get a stretch or a shrink on those. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. But at least you'll, you'll, you'll get the ones that are like lateral moves. So no dilations, but the rest of it. Questions on those? Yeah. No, it's for your response. All right, then 1, 5 is where we started today. All those composite functions. So it could ask you to add, subtract, multiply, divide, or your f of g or g of x, okay? Remember the domain restrictions both carry down. And look for new. From the F plus, the F minus, the F times, and the F over. And then on the F of G, the open dot, only the second function carries down. 
and then look for new. So if I'm looking for f of g of x, I'm worried about g of x's initial restriction, and I'm worried about what is happening when I plug the g into f at the end. If it's g of f, then I'm looking for the parent um, domain for the f of x, and then of the one once we combine them. Questions? All right, test, for, t test review assignments for me are like quiz review assignments. I'm giving you all the answers and they're already worked out. So you do not have to turn anything in. But it would be very foolish not to do a test review. Okay. It is open. I, put, I think I put Thursday as a due date just because that's when your test is. But I would say get it done as much tonight as you can so that tomorrow I can answer questions on it. And then tomorrow you can let me know. Like if there's a specific area that you need some extra practice on, whatever it is, you just got to let me know. But you got to do some work tonight.